Football on Off the Ball. With Sky, proud partner of our women's national football team. Out Believe together and we can go anywhere. Now then, you're welcome along to the show this evening. I think we're classing that weekend as eventful. Crow Park Saturday, a touch pedestrian. Crow Park Sunday was a full-on frenzy. And this evening, James Horn has stepped down as Mayo manager. So Enda McGinley, Billy Joe Padden will join us between 8 and 9 to make sense of it all. Your text into 53106, please. On the rugby front, meanwhile, courtesy of a COVID outbreak and twist of fate, these strange times that we're living in, uh, Joe Schmidt will now be the de facto head coach of New Zealand against Ireland this weekend. Rory O'Connor with all the details in Monday Night Rugby. Meanwhile, you've been listening on OTB Sports Radio. You will know this already. The Republic of Ireland uh, just in World Cup qualification action a few months ago. Full-time whistle gone. Away to Georgia. 9-0 winners. So Vera Powell and team very happy. You would have been listening to Ruth Faye and Stephen Doyle on commentary. You're just off commentary. You uh, have, by the magic of teleportation, arrived here from uh, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> the heat wasn't too bad over there now, I hope. No, sweating, Joe. Uh, <laughs> so 9-0 winners. Katie McCabe scoring mm-hmm. on the 6th, 47th and 75th minutes. We had Fahi. Uh, punching the ball into the net, I kid you not, on 13 minutes for her first Whoa, goal in her 100 caps. I mean, it makes Thierry Henry look like a choir boy, this one. Uh, Conley on 18 minutes, Louise Quinn twice, 50 and 73 minutes, Larkin 82 minutes, and then Denise O'Sullivan in the 94th minute. So it was 11 nil in Dublin, 9 nil in Georgia. That all sounds very satisfactory. Yeah, I think satisfactory is nearly an understatement. Um, strange because coming into this game you have the traditional kind of dialogue from management of saying you know we have to get past this game first we can't look too far ahead of Finland da, 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 but we all knew that was going to be a comp- this was going to be a comprehensive win I suppose the fact that Finland only only beat Georgia 3-0 uh, recently was that we thought maybe there would be a little bit more difficulty but I think it was 3-0 I'm not sure exactly how many minutes it took but there was one maybe there was 10 or so 10 or 12 minutes of a, I'd say a, if I'm being harsh a flat spell for Ireland maybe in the first half but that aside I thought they were brilliant I think they did exactly what they needed to do um, you're kind of looking across the pitch and you want players to put their hands up because the Finland game is so absolutely massive and we're just not sure about who's going to start up top we saw Vera Proud do something a little bit different this evening where in the 60th minute she made a triple substitution brought in Lily Ag, Larkin and, and Lucy Quinn which is something I love to see um, something she's been urged to do but I mean not that she ever listens to, to anybody she knows exactly what her, her plans are um, but it was good it was positive and overall some nice goals as well some beautiful play across midfield from Megan Connolly mm-hmm. who was excellent Excellent. We always talk about Denise Sullivan, Katie McCabe, um, superb, but yeah, strong performances right across the 11 and then the 14 that played overall. So I don't know, I'm happy. Stephen, how are you? Yeah, like <laughs> I, I thought, <clears throat> because all the talk, as Ruth was saying in the, in the build up to the game from the Irish camp, was that you're trying to temper expectations, don't expect something like the 11 in, in Tala. And you'd expect that from them. Um, outside, people were kind of saying, like I know Karen Duggan was on. OTB Sports saying that uh, we should be going out and getting a, a lot of goals in this game. But when the match started, you see the pitch. The pitch was an absolute joke. It was a disgrace. It looks really, really poor. You could see in the first couple of minutes the ball is sticking in certain areas of the pitch. Like Joe, there was daisies and buttercups going around this pitch. I haven't seen it since I played schoolboy football about 30 years ago. But it was poor. It was really bad. Um, the heat wasn't a factor. It was only 22 degrees in Tbilisi, which, of course, they were going to deal with by acclimatising in Antalya and Turkey. So that wasn't really a factor. But the other thing as well is that Vera Pau also spoke about this in the build-up to the games that she basically had to do, it was like six weeks pre-season in two weeks. The players had come off, you know, they'd, they'd already had a long break from the end of last season. Denise O'Sullivan, probably the only player in the, in, in, in form and, and uh, playing football at the moment. So that's a really, really difficult thing to do. So I think there were, I know some of our colleagues outside were saying that there was a bit of social media talk about the players being sloppy, not playing very well. But, you know, you've got to expect that. And as well against the team, like, and I, I, I know we have to be critical of the team, but I think you've got to be fair as well. And while they may not have... Perhaps they may have been a bit sloppy in the final term when it came to passing and that kind of stuff. You've got to think about these things, the pitch and also the lack of pre-season. I think that criticism, to be fair, was in that 10-15 minute period just before halftime that you mentioned, Ruth. It probably is difficult to sustain excellence across a game where you know you're in full control at all moments. Sure, and you have to remember this Irish team aren't 
fully um, used to being in games like these. I know we played Georgia previously, but it's still relatively new. And I think it was that period. There was a passage of maybe maybe three or four passages of play in that, in that 10 to 15 minute spell where just unnecessary sloppy passes, poor first touches. And maybe in a game like that where Ireland are so dominant. And like I said, Stephen, at one point, it, it comes to a phase in the game where it becomes like a training game where you're, you're playing against flat four or nearly a flat five and a flat five um, and you're just trying to be really patient and pick out those runs and trying to make the right decisions and uh, it's very hard to maintain precision and accuracy for 90 minutes it's not possible so I wouldn't be overly critical of, of that point um, yeah. and then you know after half time I just thought they were ruthless but there was at some points and that was the word we used for them previously in the 11-0 win at home yeah. was ruthless which was good and they could have scored so much more yeah. and to be fair to the Georgian keeper who came into it I mean her, her technique was I wouldn't say it was tr- traditional but it, it worked and she, she kept him at bay for a lot of it and I think Vera Powell will be absolutely delighted Are Ireland uh, traditionally a side that can dish out 11 nil hammerings, 9 nil hammerings, or is this a relatively new phenomenon? It, oh, it's totally relatively new. I mean, for to do that in such short succession of time, they only played Georgia last November, we have to remember as well. Um, so it's, yeah, it's incredible. And we did a little summary, I suppose, of the campaign and throughout the commentary that, you know, that one all draw away to Sweden we've beaten Finland away we just narrowly lost to Sweden albeit they dominated at at home as well but it's been there's so many good things to come out of this campaign and it's okay to say that I mean Mm. mean, it's okay to be happy and positive and optimistic because they're in a really good position they're in a really good position and I know we do like I said we need to be critical and and we will be when we need to um, but I'm just so unbelievably excited for Finland coming to Dublin on Thursday 1st of September it's going to be major I think what stood out as well Joe was that When you think back to this time last year, when this Irish team were on a run of seven defeats on the trot, people were kind of going, it was around the time Stephen Kenny was under a bit of pressure with the men's team, and people were kind of going, well, should Vera Powell maybe be getting the same kind of questions over her management? Before that Australian friendly, there were definitely murmurings. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, but... That was justified as well, I'd say, though. I think it was seven defeats in a row. Um, Against tougher opposition. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. But you look now at the run that they're on, they've played nine games, just one defeat, six wins, three draws, and you can see that the team are playing with confidence. They're trying to do things, trying to do positive things. And as I said to Ruth in the commentary as well, um, I think Karen Duggan also mentioned that this two weeks in the build-up to this game was going to give Vera Pau not just a chance to prepare for this game, yeah. but also the game against Finland. And you could see there's little patterns of play, little triangles in the middle of the pitch. You can see the link-up between... Uh, little John Connolly and Denise O'Sullivan. You can see the, the play going into the right-hand side to, to uh, Heather Payne and Lucy Quinn who came off the bench as well. So you can see Vera Powell has worked with this team so much over the last couple of weeks and now it's starting to bear fruit and hopefully even more fruit in September against Finland. Mm. Mm. So the state of play is, you mentioned the Finland game, Sweden have played uh, one game more admittedly but they're well clear they're on 19 points seven games played so 19 points Sweden seven games played Ireland and Finland have both played six games Ireland 11 points Finland 10 points so with Finland coming to Dublin on the 1st of September a draw for Ireland here it is the penultimate game of the campaign a draw for Ireland is enough to keep their noses ahead of uh, Finland presuming they don't muck up the final game of the campaign that is eminently eminently doable I mean this will be if they don't I hate to say, you know even in raise that proposition just now but if they don't this will be a very very painful third place for Ireland yeah I think it's okay to say that as well <laughs> you know it is I mean if they don't I mean they, they've beaten Finland away already they uh, deservedly so as well and I am I am confident that they can beat Finland at yeah. home in Dublin yes and this win team it there. traditionally yeah. had a wobble in them and like a result yeah. that everyone looks Ukraine. back at and go Ukraine oh, last campaign <laughs> the Ukraine is the penalties yeah, yeah. Nice yeah. Way so to yeah. Put it. this this is the next step for the team is to not have that wobble yeah and the majority of these players would have featured in that game and you don't forget those games you know you don't forget those games and they've had to wait a long time to put that wrong right and I think now coming into this game with that form and the players that you've highlighted as well um, like the beautiful thing is it's not just McCabe and O'Sullivan show anymore there's, mm. there's other players who can stand up now Well Megan and Connolly today was Megan yeah. Connolly was superb and it wasn't just the, her passing was sharp her crossing was her deliveries were fantastic but she held that kind of central midfield role where she dictated the play she was pulling all the strings yeah. Yeah. Little John was more of a defensive midfielder but she didn't have too much defending to do today but Megan Connolly absolutely superb she's a brilliant footballer 
Um, and also we have to give Abby Larkin credit because she came off the bench to make her competitive debut, linked up with her Shelburne uh, club mate and a brilliant header to get her first international goal. And not just that as well, Joe Root will probably talk more on it. She would have seen a lot more of Abby playing in, with Shelburne. But for a 17-year-old, she's so clever at picking up the right spots in the box. Like She's really, really good, which is crucial for a striker. Yeah. And Ruth, can I ask you, so uh, Stephen mentioned there like, the likes of Connolly and the other midfielders bossing the game a touch. It would seem Denise O'Sullivan is such an extraordinary player. She can be high up the pitch and playing like a quintessential number 10. But equally, I mean this genuinely, like N'Golo Kante-esque at nipping in and stealing balls. Yeah. And you look at her and you say, well, I'd like you in both spots, but I suppose <laughs> if, I, you know, Ireland's need, you know, scoring goals is generally a problem in men's and women's football. If, if you have to have a point of emphasis for her, it would be further at the pitch creating things and hurting teams further at the pitch. And so if those fellow midfielders Stephen mentioned can right. get to grips, I mean, you can release to forward. They do make good box-to-box -box midfielders in Cork, Joe, don't they? Look, she can, get, she, <laughs> she, can, she can get up and down. All, like, I know she can, but yeah. it does release her a little bit, which would be uh, very welcome, I would put it to you. Or, or where, do you where do you want Denise O'Sullivan? No, I'd, I'd, I love seeing her play more in the 10 position. Okay. I love it, but I understand why she has to be utilised in that position. And she plays for North Carolina in the six, you know, which is because she can, because everything you've mentioned there, she can do. Um, mm. I think we saw her nearly back at her best tonight. I think she just looked really confident, um, even just taking on players, just everything that we know that she can do. Mm. I'd love to see her more... Yeah, I would prefer not to have her in the six as a defensive midfielder if at all possible and even allow her to go box to box or have her in the ten because I would trust in the players around her that they can do that now mm -hmm. and I mean that, that that three at the back between Fahi Caldwell is now back from injury which is brilliant I know they weren't challenged tonight so we don't we won't get to talk an awful lot about that Fahi, Quinn and Caldwell and we have Mustaki who can drop in if needs be um, I think we're go obviously going to see Vera Pau utilise the wing back position in a more defensive manner than she needed to do tonight Um I would like to think that we can have trust in the players behind us to allow her to go forward that bit more because she's so spectacular at doing it. Yeah. Lovely. And Katie McCabe's opening goal, less of the second one, mm. I'm like, that was yeah, the touch of maybe good fortune. <laughs> but Carol. God, her technique is beautiful. Mm. Oh my God. It's just it's, gorgeous. It's to watch. really nice. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just catch smile. The highlights <laughs> if you're at work and you're listening to us now, it's worth checking out the goals. So our football coverage is thanks to Sky, proud partner of our women's national football team, I Believe Together, and we can go anywhere. First of September beckons. Thanks to you two for staying on after your commentary. Stephen Doyle, Ruth Veit, thanks very much. There was no big melee or anything? Any big fracas, fight, eye gouging, anything? Was in a, I saw one over the weekend in a baseball match. Right. Uh, the Angels against, I can't remember now who it was now, but... Uh, but in Georgia it, tonight, it, it was no, all good, this, wasn't this it? This went on for like three good, minutes, yeah. record time. <laughs> Georgia nothing. Well, we have a massive row to talk about on the show. It's not the baseball one, is it? No, well, we'll get to that tomorrow. But uh, we're going to a short break. News round. Dave McIntyre, Richard McCormick, Senate by in just one sec. Football on Off the Ball. With Sky, proud partner of our women's national football team. Outbelieve together and we can go anywhere.